Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video for you guys. In this video, we're going to be going through Gotham. Now, I haven't done a Gotham video in a while, like since the show ended, I think. That was the last time I did a Gotham video. And I think a lot of you guys know, if you've watched those videos, I wasn't the biggest fan of Gotham. I thought the few, first few episodes were decent, uh, but I think the show really did drop off and it sort of went into this weird direction, which I didn't really like too much. Um, I do think the villains are sort of too forced on, but they've already started it, so they may as well try and complete it and just keep going with it because they've, they've started it, they can't just like drop off it. So the show is going this direction, you may as well embrace it. Honestly, I was thinking about stop watching, I was, I was going to just stop watch it, uh, but stop watching it, that's the correct, I don't know what was going on there, but yeah, stop watching it. But I'm going to keep watching it just because it's Batman, Batman orientated at least. Um, I think they got, this, I'm pretty sure they got the similar contract with DC in regards to what Smallville had. Where essentially you can't show the suit, uh, like no tights, no flying or something like that. So I think they're going to have difficulties with that. But anyway, let's get into what I think needs to happen in Gotham Season 2. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, leave any comments and subscribe if you are new. So the first thing that we know is going to happen in Season 2 and basically hinted directly at the end of Season 1. Also, a trailer came out today. So funnily enough, I actually know that's going to be in Season 2. Um, so just look it up. It's just type in the Gotham, uh, just type in Gotham trailer or something like, like that and it'll pop up and that is the Batcave. So I don't think the Batcave is going to be as technical, uh, technologically, um, advanced as it usually is, or it's not going to be like all platformed and stuff like that. I think it's literally going to be a cave just by the sounds of it. Now in that trailer, it does show a door with actually like a security pad, like a number pad, like digital. So at least it's got that on it. So it might have some other stuff inside, but it's going to be interesting to see what's in this cave. Um, I don't think it's going to be unbelievably advanced, but I will think it, gi it will give Bruce some form of direction as to where he should go. And I think it's also... In the, the only good thing about this is I think it's a good direction that Bruce actually discovers the cave at the age of the years because it at least it gives him that uh, push to want to become the caved crusader and actually, you know, fight crime. Next up is that we know that uh, they've given away that Bruce will will start training in this season. Now, we sort of did last season with Alfred, sort of like wanted to protect himself. So that's already they've already started the training essentially. But I think more more might be in both the detective side as well as the physical side. Now, obviously, we know that Batman is technically the world's greatest detective, or well, at least that's the road that they used to go with him. So I think they will go down that road as well, like improving his detective skills but along with also him being able to take pain as well as give it, so martial arts training and stuff like that. But the only issue with this is that he's, the character is still young, so a lot of people might be like not the biggest fan of it, especially people that maybe aren't too into the Batman thing. They might just watch it because of the story. Uh, but I think they will go along down this road, uh, sort of teaching him to take the pain as well as dish it out. Now, at the end of Season 1, uh, Fish Mooney apparently died. Now, I think she is dead. I think we said this before in previous videos because, um, what's her name? Jada Pinkett Smith um, didn't sign another season and she wasn't at Comic-Con or anything like that because obviously that would ruin the story if she was at Comic-Con. So, Penguin is going to be the top dog for now. We saw him in a trailer talking to Jim Gordon. His hair looked a bit different. Uh, like not, not like the colour or anything, but just looked like style differently than he usually has it, but whatever. Penguin's going to be the top dog, but I think it's going to be... I've said this before, I think in Season 2, Penguin's going to have like a rise and then a fall. I think at the end of the season, he'll fall again and possibly end at the, bo uh, end at the bottom. Sorry, like it might be a mutiny against him with his henchmen and other forces below him. Or maybe he just meets another um, villain and they just take him down. Now, one interesting thing about... Penguin is that when Batman is actually in Gotham City, so when Batman's actually Batman, um, Penguin was sort of the dude you wanted to go through if you needed like firearms, like guns essentially, or like explosives or anything like that. So I think in season two, they need to introduce that business side of him in regards to this stuff. So um, seeing that there's no Maroni or Falcone in the show anymore to stop him, I think he, that's where they'll go and he has like sort of like free reign and there's no one really competing with him. Another thing that we need to see them do in Season 2 is introduce original villains. Now, we saw some of these throughout the season. Some of them were really silly, um, but the big one was Fish Mooney. Now, Fish Mooney, I didn't really... I just don't really like Jada Pinkett Smith that much. Like, hate on me if you want. I just don't really like her. I just didn't really like the character that much. But I guess you're not really meant to like the villain. So, I really wanted to see her die or something happen to her. But I think introducing these original villains um, is good for the show because... It helps prove that if they keep getting away with it, it only uh, exemplifies the whole Batman having to come in and 
clean the city out because it proves that Gordon cannot complete his job and Gordon is sort of failing at his job. Not only with the original villains, but ba- mainly the Batman villains. If the original villains are the ones that Gordon has to take out and he can't deal with the Batman villains, it sort of proves that Batman has to exist in that city to, um, to sort of fight against these actual big villains. And also, I think it's silly if... I've said this before how in season one they sort of like push the villain, like the big villain like Riddler and Catwoman and stuff like that and Two-Face and Penguin. Um, I didn't like that they pushed that that much. I don't mind the Penguin one because he's still young in this show. So obviously he's going to continuously rise and fall throughout the crime ranks. But I don't like Gordon constantly fighting with these Batman villains. It just seems a bit silly. Um... I think it's just a bit silly that Gordon would only face Batman villains, not any other type of villain. So I think that introducing all these other original villains would be good. Now, I think they're introducing Huntress into the show. I think it's Huntress. I might be wrong. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I think it's Huntress that they're introducing in this season. So it'll be interesting what her role is. Next up is that I think they need to make Gotham much, much darker than it is. Now, it's still the dark sh- um, city in the show, but it's not Gotham as we should see it. Um, I don't know if it's something to do with lighting. I don't know if they just can't be bothered making it dark. But I think they like Gotham should be a scary place to live, and that's why Bo- Batman is the one protecting it. So it should be a scary place to live. It shouldn't look like downtown New York or whatever. I don't know what it looks like. It just... It sort of looks like Daredevil, like, you know how Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen, it sort of looks a bit like that, but you got to remember that Hell's Kitchen is still in New York, it shouldn't look like as dark as, it shouldn't look like Gotham, Gotham should just be unbelievably like sinister and look pretty evil. Now no, I'm not saying that Gotham looked like it was the best place to live, but it could definitely have been a lot darker and a lot worse to live in, like people literally shooting each other in the streets, but um, I'm assuming that this is the way they're going and maybe like down the track of the series it might get darker that's the whole point of it like it, it wasn't that bad to live in but then all these villains started coming in and making the town much worse so that could be the reason for it so thanks for watching guys leave any opinions in the comment section below do you agree with anything i said what do you think needs to happen in season two that i haven't mentioned myself and uh yeah make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're new and i will catch you later goodbye